What information is AI getting from you? Notice that I didn't ask what information are you using AI to get for you? The question is, what information is your AI taking, storing, and even selling about the things you're using it for? In an age where the value of data about individuals is increasing and the ability to collect that data is becoming easier to mine, it's worth taking some time to look at how we can find a way to remain private online. In this video, I'll share with you how most AI providers are handling your data, and then I'll share with you a very, very cool solution to this problem, today's sponsor, Venice AI, a private and confidential solution with some extra features that are really, really nice. Privacy is not only important for us as individuals, but if we're in any situation where we're using AI to teach, we want to protect the privacy of our students as well. And this is something I'll look at in more depth in a future video. For now, let's take a look at how a typical interaction with AI works. When you log in and enter an AI prompt, that query goes to the AI provider. It's sent to the AI model to be processed. The model then generates a result and it returns the result to you. This all seems very simple and intuitive, except there's more happening in the background. Your identity, the prompt that you used, your history with that AI, and more is all captured and stored by the AI service you're using. This is often sold as a way to improve the AI model, but it's also very much a way for that AI provider to capture personal data about you that can then be used in other ways or even sold. We've all had that eerie situation where we've been looking up something on the internet and then we start seeing advertisements related to our searches. In some ways, this may seem annoying or even maybe welcomed by some that are looking for the things that they like, except it's not always innocent. That information can be stored forever, can be sold to anyone, and it can even be used in ways that you might not or wouldn't approve of. Now, privacy and confidentially online is a very large subject to cover. In this video, I'm not going to be able to talk about every aspect of being careful with how you use the internet. But let's look at how Venice AI breaks down that data collection process and ensures privacy and confidential AI use. With Venice AI, when you log in, you'll use a web interface and connect to Venice AI. You'll then be able to select from multiple different AI models and you'll generate a query against the model that you're interested in querying. You'll send that query to Venice AI and Venice AI will then use a proxy server in order to use their identity to query that model. They'll take your query, Query the model that you've selected, return, they'll get the results from that model, and they'll return the results to you. Thanks to Venice AI, I can share with you a way to use AI that's private, permissionless, and uncensored. They're sponsoring this video, which is nice and it helps the channel, but once you see how they work, you'll see why I'm impressed with them, and I've made it my main AI tool. So let's go into Venice AI and have a look and see what the things it can do for me. It's going to be able to do text models, image models, and even code models or co models that are optimized for code. You can see here that I have a number of different text models that I can use. Each of them has their strengths and weaknesses, but I can compare and contrast, which is very interesting. I can use image models in here, fast images. You can see that I've got all sorts of different uh, types of image models in there. And then we have code models, which is great for doing any type of code that I might be doing. I'll just demonstrate with a text model for this, for this particular demonstration, but you can see there's also characters in here, so I can generate characters. There's an API, and there's some token stuff in there as well, which I don't generally use. I'm just going to work with text models, image models, and code models in this demo. So if I look in here at, say, DeepSeek, so I'm going to use the DeepSeek model, and I'll ask it, and I'll say, why is AI privacy importance? So why is AI privacy important? And we'll see what DeepSeek has to say about this. Now what's interesting is I'll get a result and this result is being returned to Venice and then Venice is sending it to me. So there's no capture of my identity, there's no capture of my information. And you can see here it gives me some information of why it's important. And I can go in here, I can actually take and copy why is AI privacy important? And you can see that I've got a couple um, paragraphs here. Let's ask Dolphin the same question. So I'll go into Dolphin and I'll go ahead and paste this in. We'll ask Dolphin, why is AI important? 
AI privacy important? You can see I get a little bit of a different answer. So this is one of the things that I really like about Venice AI is that I can easily switch to different models and I can see what the different models might return to me, really allowing me to get a real sense of the model, get more familiar with the model, and all, by, all privately. I'm not having to worry about this being tracked back to me for any reason. Uh, I can be very private and nobody's going to be able to sell my data. I can also go in, of course, and I can use things like um, chat. I can go into things like image generation. And so I don't generally uh, use a lot of AI images, but it is very handy when I need to generate something to have multiple models available to me because these multiple models will generate different types of images to different types of quality and coding is very useful. So let's say for example, I want to use the Quen here and I could say something like, you know, write a Python script to, I don't know, to play tic-tac-toe. So I could go in here and see if it's able to generate a tic-tac-toe game for me. And you can see here it's going to go in and there's a script. It's going to talk about generating the code here and what I'm trying to do. It gives me an outline of the code and then it gives me the actual Python code itself. So I could bring this into a Python interpreter. I usually would, of course, want to troubleshoot this and make sure it works, but you can see that I've got a really nice framework and structure for this tic-tac-toe game in Python, and I did that through the Quen 2.5 Coder 32B, and new models will be in here as they are developed and as uh, Venice works with those models. This is just a brief introduction to the Venice AI environment, but I've been very um, interested in the results and I've been playing around with it quite a bit and I'm pretty impressed. For myself, I have the pro plan because I do a lot of research and features such as the ability to work with PDFs is really important to me. I'm also very happy that I can access multiple AI models with Venice AI. Different models have their strengths and weaknesses. So having a choice all in one easy interface is really helpful. We can also add Venice AI to our phone, but it's not in the App Store. Why? Because the App or Play Store would not allow it to remain private. So here's how we can set it up on our iPhones. And it's really the same procedure if you're using an Android device as well. You'll open up a web browser and you'll navigate to Venice AI. When you're on the Venice AI site, there'll be a share button at the bottom. Use that share button in order to share it as a link on your home screen. So when you click on the share button, you'll have a number of options. We'll add it to our home screen. When we add it to our home screen, that'll create a shortcut on our home screen to the Venice AI app. And that way we don't have to go through the app store. We're actually just invoking it through a web browser so we can have privacy. Now there is an important thing to remember when you're using Venice AI. Well, it is true that your information is private, encrypted, confidential, the queries that you're doing, you're still using models that are made by other AI companies. This means that any bias or restrictions within those models will still be in those models. As an example, there are certain political or social questions that you might ask, say, DeepSeek, that you would yield a much different result than if you asked ChatGPT. Same question, different results. These models are controlled by their respective providers, but your connection to those models will be private with Venice AI. It won't be seen as coming from you as an individual. It'll be just seen through the proxy of Venice AI. Venice AI does support sending queries to the Dolphin AI model, which is much less censored, but I haven't really explored that model extensively, so I can't speak to that. The nice thing about Venice AI is that you can easily and quickly run the query again against multiple models, so you can compare results. And this expands your ability to get greater perspectives while still protecting your privacy and maintaining your anonymity. I'm excited to work more with Venice AI in my research in AI prompting, Check out the links in the description for any special offers they may have provided me to pass along to you. I'm also very interested in your thoughts on Venice AI. You can try the free level and see the results for yourself. So far, I'm quite impressed and I'll be playing with it a lot more extensively. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.